I'm Kevin Barnett. Welcome to the Maker's Garage, except this time we're not in the garage. We've snuck into Carbide 3D HQ. Welcome to Torrance, California, home of Carbide 3D, makers of the Shape Oco. We've snuck in because we want to share with you the new machine from Carbide 3D, the Shape Oco Pro, coming out momentarily. But before we get to showing you the details of that machine, let's take you for a brief tour of the history of Shape Oco. What began as a Kickstarter in 2011, an all wooden laser cut prototype, later became version one. It was a proof of concept. Version two would come in 2013, still multi-tool powered, 12 by 12 by three, it's getting cleaner. Then SO3, the Shape Oco 3, now you had a machine that was ready for a wide array of abilities, smooth and accurate machining, a robust framework with large custom extrusions, multiple sizes, and it ran Gerbil for motion control and interpretation of G-code, the standard language for machining. Now Carbide 3D was making chips of all kinds. With the introduction of the Shape Oco 3, Carbide 3D set a new standard for desktop machining, but they weren't done. This is the current model of the XXL Shape Oco, a much improved Z-axis, an incredibly robust and capable machine. We know that this machine's still available, but today we'll introduce you to a new machine, the Shape Oco Pro. If you think we spent all that money on a PI to track people down and all that time tailing folks and all that money to copy the key here to HQ just to come in and hang around for a few minutes, you're wrong. We had a man on the inside and we're gonna to talk to him now. Winston Moy, come on in. Hey Kevin. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for joining us here and now you guys are launching the Pro. We are, what super was exciting. The, yeah, really exciting. What was the thinking behind it initially? Why go to a Pro? Well, we have the Shape Oco, which is a fantastic product but people always want to push the Shape Oco harder. And so we thought, why don't we give them the ability to do that? Why don't we improve the Shape Oco, make it beefier, make it stronger, make it faster? And this is what we ended up with. Yeah, speaking of beefier and faster and stronger, let's start with the linear rails here and some of the improvements. What are the first things people are going to notice? The rails. So linear rails are great because they give you rigidity. That makes this machine super strong. It doesn't vibrate as much. You get better surface finishes on your parts. So overall, you can push faster, you can make better looking parts, and uh, overall this machine is gonna perform much better than the stock shape Oco. I see it's a Z plus over there in the middle, so we're still lead screw driven, Correct. but on the sides, belts, but much improved. Yes, so these are 15 millimeter belts, which means it's almost double the strength of the old belts. So these basically will not stretch. So you get rock solid cuts, um, much better accuracy, and again, much improved performance over the stock shape Oco 3. Okay, in terms of obvious differences, I know you've already noticed you're sharp out there, the bed. Uh, this is one of our favorite innovations. We call it the hybrid table. Uh, we thought we'd give people the best of both worlds. So you have integrated basically T-slots uh, and MDF. So you could screw parts into this table. You could use T-slots, use clamps. It gives you infinite flexibility for how you hold your parts on the Shape Oco Pro. Yeah, and I love that because these are so narrow. How wide are each one of these strips? Uh, each one of these strips is approximately three inches. It's about 75 millimeters in width. See, I told you, he's an engineer. You get the exact answer. If you want exact answers, Winston Moy's your guy. And every now and then I break into metric. But I love the fact that it's three inches apart. Personally, I have the T-slot bed for mm -hmm. the XXL standard Shape Oco 3 but this one is so much narrower, you get so many more options. I find myself stacking pieces of wood across mm -hmm. or making giant clamps to hold things down. So we figured that the spacing of this should be a little narrower to give you more options because the standard T-slot bed, they're a little, wide, a little wider apart. Mm -hmm. So this just gives you a lot more options. If your part's a little shorter, a little wider, you can just move one slot over. Um, and the other great thing about this is that these are really easy to cut down. So if you have a table saw, you can machine into this and then cut a new one. And the other thing is because these are raised from the aluminum parts by quite a fair margin, you can surface this down so that your table is dead flat, perfectly parallel to your machine axes. And I can do multiple times with that too. I can probably go through it a number of times. Yep, and get it each time consistent. you'll just take down a, 
a fraction of a millimeter just to face it down, skim it down, get it flat, get it clean. If you cut into it, you can basically erase it and make sure that you're always starting with a surface that you trust that's flat. Yeah, I love this. It takes a whole aspect out of it for you at home. Work holding, the more work holding you have, the easier it is to operate, the more you'll enjoy your machine, to be honest. Yeah, and the more you'll make with it. Yeah, that's the idea. Tell me about the rigidity of this. This is a far different setup in terms of flatness, consistency to the bed of this machine. You've got a sharp eye. So we've got extrusions uh, for the T-slots going all the way back. And we also have multiple extruded rails going across. And these rails rest flat on the table, which means that there is no sag in this table. You could stand on it, you could jump on it, you could put 100 pounds on it. It's not going to move. It Hang is... on, let's give that a try. No, just kidding. <laughs> This is as solid as your workbench. So whatever you put in here, it's gonna be rock solid. It's gonna be held to a system. And these supports also extend to the Y-axis rails. We have multiple standoffs here so that there is no sag up here. Um, and it is just super beefy. It's not gonna move on you. So now we have work holding, we've got all this space. I know people are trying to choose what size, how much, but you wanna maximize their usage of whatever space they have. Right, so we have such a great table system that we wanna make use of this space. So we push the Y axis to the back of the carriage so that when the machine travels forward, the majority of your cutting area is over this hybrid table. So that's the big innovation here. And that means you can work hold parts, use the stability and the rigidity of this table system to its full potential. One of my favorite things as they continue to improve the SO3 model, the Shape Oak 03, which is still available here, XXL behind me, was the bit setter. Uh, Thank God for the bit setter. It saves so much time. Whoever it is, yes, the bit setter. Now you've integrated it into the machine. It is. So that is one of the most useful tools you can have on a Shape Oco. And we figured we don't want this machine to be without it. So the bit setter is standard, which means when you're doing programs with multiple tools, you need to change an end mill. Uh, you can just automatically go touch off on the bit setter and keep going. Uh, it's such a useful feature we figured that it had to be standard on the Pro. One of the other things that catches my eye is the robust nature of this machine. Gone is the sheet metal, hello billet. Yeah, so when we were conceiving this machine, we wanted to make sure that everything that comes together that needs to be precise is machined. So the ends of the rails are machined, these plates are machined, all the interfaces are going to be straight, perpendicular, whatever it needs to be, it'll be accurate. This machine, when you put it together, will just come together. It'll be shockingly square right off the bat with almost no adjustment. Okay, we've gone through a lot of the physical makeup of the machine. What about the guts? The guts are different, aren't they? Uh, so we have an upgraded controller board. Uh, leveraging everything we knew about the old Shape Oco, we knew that there's so many other things we need to add. We're switching to inductive switches. We have the bit setter. Uh, so we have a new control board, Carbide Motion 3.0, and it includes all the connectors that you need to plug in all these accessories without dongles and other boards and splitters that you have to add onto the old machine. Nothing worse in the world than dongles. It's the worst invention in modern computing history, dongles. So none of the, all of that is gone. Uh, everything plugs straight into the board like it was meant to be there from the start. Now, I don't want people to get discouraged about the machine that's next to us. It is an incredibly robust machine. I've used it for years and years in terms of being square and accurate. What accuracy are we talking about with the SO3 or the SO3 Pro? So because it's the same underlying technology, the accuracy will be pretty much identical. Um, it's just that, again, you can push this machine harder and retain that accuracy, whereas on the standard Shape Oco 3, you'd have to go a little slower or take a shallower cut. All right, Winston, we see the XXL here now. Mm -hmm. Are all three sizes gonna be covered by the Pro? So at launch, we're just going to have the double XL uh, later on, we will introduce the smaller models, but for now we're focusing on the big one uh, when you want the most productivity. Once we get everything settled with the big machine, then we'll expand our product line and bring the improvements of the Pro platform to the XL and the standard Shape Oco 3. I like this, just, I, you know, this, this does it for me. Just the power button it integration is, right into the rail. It is quite nice. Um, it is a great way if something goes wrong that you need to shut down the machine. And it also gives you a good visual indication that the machine is on. And this is, again, one of the uh, improvements that we added uh, in terms of integrating everything with our new electronics and just rethinking the entire structure to be able to put nice things right at your fingertips. Can we run this thing? Can we cut some stuff? Yeah, I don't see why not. All right, let's, let's throw uh, some aluminum on here, brass. Or let's search the store, whatever we can find. Let's start cutting it. Maybe a pizza box. <laughs> We 
We've talked a lot about the Pro, but this is not the case where one machine replaces the other. Carbide 3D is adding to the Shape Oco profile. You can still get an SO3. Right. Uh, we didn't want to eliminate the Shape Oco 3 because it is a really great value, and we didn't want to raise the, uh, the price of entry into the CNC world. Uh, so if you're looking for value and you're looking to make parts, this is still a really great way to get into CNC. But this is a much improved machine from where it started. What are some of the major things that are better about this machine right out of the box? The biggest recent change is that the Z Plus, the lead screw driven Z axis, is now standard. So instead of having V wheels on the Z axis carriage, they've been replaced with linear rails, which are much more rigid. They have almost no flex. So not only will this give you better quality cuts with less vibration, just like with the um, Pro, uh, this is just overall a much more sturdy uh, part. It has a higher resolution in terms of the Z-axis, so you can get really precise depths of cut. Again, we're raising the bar on Shape Oco. So it's easier to go onion skin on this one. Right, it holds that uh, depth of cut much more precisely. Um, and we also have inductive homing switches on these machines now, so uh, there's no contact when you go to home. There's almost no possibility of crushing your switches if you crash the machine. Fantastic. Yeah, inductive limit switches are something that is new for here. In fact, when I bought my machine, there were no limit switches at all. I had to get it as a kid afterwards. Yeah, uh, these are great because they're non-contact, which means you can't crash these switches or break them. There's no moving parts on them. And this machine is available in three sizes right now. Right, uh, correct. That has not changed. We still have the stock size Shape Oco 3, which will do about 16 inches by 16 inches. We have the XL, which will do 31 by 16 and we have the double XL, which will do 31 by 33. What are the dividing points for choosing a size right now with the Shape Oco 3 and in the future with the Shape Oco Pro? So the biggest difference in terms of size is just what you can machine with it. If you want to make a really big sign, you need a really big machine. Uh, if you get a small machine, you could sort of pass the part through the machine, but if you want to do it in one shot, you kind of need a machine that's wide enough or long enough. Uh, so I would suggest that you get the machine that fits your ambitions. If you want to make big things, you should get the big machine. If you're fine with small parts or you have space constraints, you can get the smaller machines. So Winston just challenged you right there. He wants to know, how big are your ambitions? That's rhetorical, don't answer now. Or answer by yourself, talk to yourself in front of the computer. Or if you do that, don't, people might think you're crazy. Quiet, never mind, quiet, quiet, just move, move along. So there we did it. First ever run for the Shape Oco Pro right here. Very exciting, had a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what other people do with this machine. Uh, I know we're just scratching the surface. We did, we scratched the surface in aluminum, we did it in plastic and also in bamboo. Uh, I'll let you do the honors there, Winston. Right. We got crack a, that a fine little onion skin. Onion skin, we found out CNC is a lot like ogres, layers. Gotta do a little sanding here, but uh, that is a little carbide 3D logo in bamboo. Or plastic. Might have to get the bandsaw off for that one, we left a little space. A little aluminum onion skin. Very nice. Uh, watching it go through the aluminum was a lot of fun. We made a mess. That's exactly what you should do in CNC is make a mess. That's how it should go, right? Right. Uh, that more mess means more fun. Very so, good. So uh, go have yourself some fun. Winston, thanks for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. Who says crime doesn't pay? A little B&E breaking and entering here in Torrance, California paid off. We got to be here in Carbide 3D's HQ. Shape Oco Pro, Shape Oco 3. There's options there for you. So jump into the CNC community and join us at Carbide 3D and join us again for the Maker's Garage.